Hello and welcome to the Animation Industry Podcast. My name is Terry and guess what? After five years of running this podcast every single week, I have finally decided to start a Patreon. (laughs) So if you would like to contribute to this podcast and help keep it running, consider throwing some change my way by checking out the Patreon link in the description of this chat. Thanks very much. This week, I'm chatting with Patima Hamrad, a mixed media artist from Thailand who specializes in stop motion and 2D animation. She is known for her extremely cute films. At least I think they're extremely cute, and I've been following her on Instagram for quite some time. Little Miss Dung Jai, Autumn was here, and heads up. In our chat, she shares her journey of getting into animation in Thailand, including how to do it and what opportunities exist there for animators, as well as how she's branched off to follow a freelance career. So without further ado, let's jump in. Hello, Patima. How how are you doing? Um, nice and really excited. Yeah. You say nice, but I know it's 1.45 in the morning where you yeah, are it in is. Thailand. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's like really normal when I stay super late. Sometimes it's like super sleepy. It really depends. Okay, so yeah. so I'm glad you're not super sleepy this time. But thank you for joining me, you know, all the way from Thailand. You're the first person in Thailand that I've talked to on this podcast. So I'm really interested to hear how it is over there and about you. But um, what else I think we could just start off with was you were teaching me how to pronounce your name before this. And I was not pronouncing it correctly. Maybe we can just go through it again. So I was saying Patama Hamrod? No. I mean, it's really close already. Yeah, I was already impressed. But yeah, um, there's a like, slight uh, off tones a little. Yeah, because in Thailand, we we have like that specific thing when you like, if you go off tones, the words can change uh-huh. and the meaning can change really fast. Uh, so my name uh, is uh, Patama Homrod. Yeah. Oh, Patama Homrod. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah, embarrassed. It's better. <laughs> but, but, but it's not wrong or anything because like the whole words are coming together. Interesting. But if so you did... go around and you want to compliment someone like, oh, you're so pretty and you say sue, but then you say sue, it became really bad because sue means like bad luck. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> That's that, that's too close. You're either really pretty yeah. or you're, you're bad luck. Wow. So was I yeah. was I changing the the meaning of your name when I was saying it? Uh, not really. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I'm gonna practice this, but that's that's quite interesting. In English, we don't have that at all, so it's it's yeah. really different for me. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you can be more expressive when you like sing a song. You can go like different tones. And, yeah, but in Thai, it's really hard because you can yeah. change the meanings of the words really fast. Yeah, that's crazy. I guess for us, like if you change the tone, it just, you know, you can add sarcasm or, you know, like you can add uh, a feeling to it, but it doesn't change the overall meaning too much. But uh, okay, cool. Interesting. I'm learning something. It's 1.45 in the morning for you. It's 1.45 in the afternoon for me. And here we are. So let's let's... I don't want to take up your whole night. Let's talk about animation. So, you know, I've followed you on Instagram for a while. I'm really happy you uh, decided to do this. But I want to know, you know, where did your stop motion and 2D talent and everything, where did that start for you? You know, growing up in Thailand, at what point did you decide, you know, I want to get into animation and what did that look like? Oh, well, um, it's a long story a long way i got here like b- before well, remember you have to go to bed I... at some point <laughs> oh yeah that too. i'm just kidding no, um, no no tell me tell me yeah I, I have time i am a night out today oh, okay yeah, don't worry right. yeah but um before animation i didn't really think about making moving stuff but i was fortunate enough to get into art like quite early When I was very young, like my parents, they would get me art supplies and do like all the fun things, uh, especially in the weekends, like when they had time to spend together with me and my sister. I have two sisters, one older and one younger. Yeah. So we had a great time making art. So it kind of created like, uh, it kind of linked the great memories of myself with art. I associated with like, good things you know yeah so yeah it's kind of like an escape and all that but I didn't really get into animation until I was in high school like around like finishing it 
Uh, I was mainly working on like illustrations, like painting, uh, making like lots of drawings and portraits, even like something that is not related to what I do today. Yeah, but it's kind of like uh, different mediums. But then I started like, got really interested in like games and storytelling. And there was this application that you can write stories on it. And they would have like characters, assets that you can put them in there. And they have specific codes that uh, it's really easy to learn. They already optimized it. So it's kind of like a platform where you can write stories and make your own animation. But I was not satisfied with the art style. Yeah, and the animation. So I was so, like, hmm. It's like just, I can do better than yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, not really, but it's kind of like something is missing. And I feel like it's, it's really, uh, really hard to just like, you know, I, I, I don't like asking them to like, can you make this? Like, you know, when you make uh, suggestions to like the developers and all that, you have to wait quite long. So yeah. I was curious, like, is it really hard to make animation? And is there a way I can learn this in my country and all that? So I kind of like did some research and blah, blah, blah. And then my big sister, she said like, oh, you should go to this uh, university. They have like, a course like for an BFA like degrees that is kind of related to animation so I got into that without wow. knowledge of making any animation wow yeah. so you never made animation and then you saw this website and you're like I challenge you I'm gonna do this myself <laughs> and then yeah, but, yeah, yeah you said you weren't sure if there were any I guess any training or courses or whatnot in Thailand so but your sister found this one school that focuses on a fine arts degree yeah, um, it's it's actually because like most people like in Thailand, they also like uh, making illustrations and all that. And most of the people don't really have that much knowledge about animation. Yeah. But I mean, to give the credits like properly, but like people have been doing this for so long in my country. It's just like it's not really widely known, especially in my like high school and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like you kind of have to have like a little bit of privilege to get into it or maybe mm. like you know like to get to know that there is a place that you can go and learn about it and even when I attended the school um the courses are not really that advanced and all that and there are not like lots of softwares that you can learn because like we kind of lack uh I said it's like professions that we want to teach uh professionally yeah. in the university because the income is not a lot like for teachers in this country so most of the people that kind of like got really uh, skilled in this field they would usually go out and like get work that is has a lot more income or like is a lot more rewarding instead so of so you, you're saying like if somebody got a fine arts degree, they wouldn't end up working in fine arts. They would they would get something that pays better. Mm, it really depends. But uh, what what I was saying was that like uh, most of the people that is really talented in the mm -hmm. field, they usually wouldn't want to come back and be become oh, a I teacher. Yeah. Like most of the people that we have that are really talented either kind of like moved away from the country and work in like the industry. For an example, we have this person who works in the USA, like for Disney and all that. Right. So because there are lots of opportunities like in other countries. So when you when yeah. you decided you wanted to get into animation and your sister recommended this school and you went to this school and you were studying animation, even if it wasn't as robust as you expected it to be, what was your, you know, and you saw that there wasn't a lot of income for these jobs where you were and teachers weren't paid very well and people would move away. Were you planning on moving away once you graduated to work in animation or um, like what was the overall goal that you had seeing all these you know, not great messages about what you were pursuing. Yeah, about that, it's kind of like really weird for me because like I, I never really 
feel like it was gonna be like an obstacle to do that. Maybe because I am constantly learning English my time. I think that's that's kind of like one of the thing that has opened up like many doors for me mm. in my life. But yeah, it's the language because like many people who struggle to learn English, like they don't, they wouldn't have lots of opportunities to like work with clans overseas or like going out. So I feel really privileged, even though I I, I feel like I, I had to struggle a lot to get that in my life too, because um, I had to learn all this by myself. Like wow. language and everything, but I was still really lucky because this happened because I like listening to songs from the Western, <laughs> and then I just wanted to know like, oh, what are they singing about? What does that mean? I just want to understand. It sounds nice, but I want to know what you're singing, and then that's kind of like the study point, and then also like games because like, oh, there was this one time like I, I started playing The Sims. And then someone kind of challenged me that, why don't you turn it in English yeah. and see if your Sims can survive? And I was really excited that I can like cook <laughs> some stuff for them to eat. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh yeah, my it's, goodness. it's never really hard for me to get into the language. That's incredible, for, actually. Yeah. Like, and congratulations on, you know, I... I've played video games in other languages and I just give up in the menu screen. I'm like, I don't know what I'm clicking. Yeah, and I stopped, really I stopped, stopped. Yeah, but it seems like if you can't, like, if you don't try to do something, they die. So yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> that's kind of like something that I have to do. That's, yeah. a, that's a really good point that you brought up. You know, just knowing English gives you a lot of opportunities because a lot, most of the animation that comes out of the earth is from the westernized world where English is mainly spoken. So yeah, hundred um, percent. So you finished school, you um, like, I'm just wondering then what, you know, you finished, <laughs> you finished school, you have some animation, you want to work in animation and stop motion and all this stuff, you know, English, how did you get your first opportunity? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, the first opportunity is actually not an English like working job. I actually mm. know like someone who already graduated and they kind of know my professor, like one of my professor, and they were working on like a project together. And then they wanted like some people to work on the animation. And then this professor of mine, um, he knew like, he knew his student really well, and he he is one of the person that try to, uh, bring opportunities to his students. So I kind of got like my first, first freelance gig like when I was in sophomore years. Nice. It was, yeah, it was like the first taste of like oh working with a lot of people and kind of like oh dive into the pipeline, and that's when I decided I would not want to go into the office. Oh. and become a freelance <laughs> become so, a freelancer yeah so what was your role in this exactly was this um uh, just an animator like just okay. a 2d animator but it's like it's i feel like there are not lots of like creative freedom on it and then like when there are like specific like, time that you have to attend to something it's like really hard for me yeah. it's, it's it's just not for me like so you were in going into way. a studio every day to do this work uh uh not exactly a studio but it's kind of like we have to come into a specific place and like attend it from this time to this time and work together and all that and i feel like uh yeah this this thing is just like a script coming to me and I did I just have to work on it and then I don't know if it's like it means anything you know but maybe if I work in a different place maybe it would change maybe it's just a different working culture and all that yeah but for me in here in this country I don't think I am the best fit for it mm. yeah I mean so far what you've described to me is just a normal working environment where you go to a place you have to be there for oh, nine yeah. five or whatever and work um, I think in Thailand there's like one of these things that is unhealthy hmm. or maybe like I don't know if other people can relate like especially in like the Southeast Asian countries 
Mm, but there is something that I find really different and it drastically changed like the dynamics of working um, for yeah. me. Because like in Thailand, like sometimes if, even with like freelancer or even even though you work in an office, sometimes the boss will call you on weekends, which is not good because weekends are supposed to be like the times where you get to relax, you know? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes like it's like really late at night. They will just text you. Can you make changes to this? Yeah. And the income is just it's just not matching like. Oh, you're you have me working overtime for this thing, but you're not willing to pay a lot. So it's yeah. like lots of people are struggling, and they are actually fighting for like a better income and working time right now. Wow, I mean, yeah, started that's a union here. Oh, they started even a union. Though, yeah, even though it's it's not really strong or anything right now, but I'm hoping I have hope for this country that it will change. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, we just got our first animation union in Canada last year, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, in the U.S., it's quite unionized already, which is great. Um, so, okay. So, yeah, maybe we can take a moment to just describe the, you know, the state of the in the animation industry in Thailand. So, you know, you had exposure to this one kind of studio space. Are there a lot of studios taking work for animators? Uh, there are not a lot. I... I know, I don't even know more than 10 studios in Thailand. Maybe there are some like very small studios, yeah. but the big, bigger ones are like, they're not a lot. And they what? mostly like, they don't work for their own like IPs, but they kind of like, uh, kind of like outsourcing yeah. for other studios like in the West or, you know. So are they working on like TV shows or movies or commercial projects or other things? kind of like all of them yeah yeah <laughs> interesting like, kind of like uh, anything that we can you know and if we have people to do it they put people to do it it's kind of like that most of that's, the studios are like that do you that's interesting so and in your program that you took for university wasn't specifically for animation but there are about 10 animation studios from your knowledge are there now that you've you know come out of school and you have more connections and whatnot are there actually schools that teach animation just to put people in these studios or is it more people that learn animation on their own get hired mm, i think it's like kind of like a mix of both. Mm. but most of the people that also go into university and get the job they also like learn a lot on their own i gotcha like, i gotcha yeah yeah well it doesn't sound Sometimes very nicely. yeah it doesn't sound very big so i guess you have to really have a passion for it to learn on your own to to get a job in yeah. in Thailand really yeah hard. um yeah like I said I'm really fortunate that I know the language and like kind of share my art on social media even though I didn't really expect anything much from it but I feel like it's kind of a little bit of like a, an essential as of now because like for Thai people um, I feel they they struggle a lot and I feel really bad for them and I try to tell them that you know like as of now please try to you know learn to communicate because like it's it's really hard to you know get yeah. a job in the country and for people to pay you fairly um I I also don't want to judge others that don't feel like art is something that should be expensive because like the economic is not exactly good here like people are trying to uh, feed our stomachs and all that so yeah, yeah it, it's kind of understandable and also kind of painful at the same time totally. um, most of the people here kind of like if if you want to be an independent artist you have to also be a uh, content creators and pose a lot and share a lot and it's really physically demanding and all that so yeah oh, for sure yeah. I don't even I've never I post like one thing to social media a year and I'm already exhausted from that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I I I feel like I have lots of respect for people who post like almost every day or someone who posts every day. Like, yeah. wow, they got lots of energy to do all that. Totally. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, you know, you, you said English opened up a lot of opportunities for you. And also, like, I've noticed since COVID happened and, and you know, the, the unfortunate thing that is, but it kind of um, opened up comfortability for studios to work with remote uh, artists. So have 
has that combination of, you know, uh, being a content creator, having English as an asset and, you know, studios feeling more comfortable working remotely. Has that enabled you uh, these past couple of years at all? I think it has, but it's also, yeah, I always say this, but I feel like I'm super lucky that I put something out there and someone finds it. Yeah. So, so what is most of your, you know, I know you've done some stop motion projects. I know you've done some 2D stuff. What is most of your work these days looking like? Oh, um, it's really hard to say. I, I think it's still like lots of like mixed media stuff. Hmm. And also like some of 2Ds. It's just, it's kind it, it's still like forming into something that is, I, I, I still don't have a specific like, things to show to share i don't know fair, i'm still fair. exploring i guess how do um how do clients find you like what are they looking for typically uh i think the the one thing that has opened up the opportunities like for me as of now and in the past i think is the mixed media thing that i do like the stop hmm. motion thing i don't know maybe it's recognizable style i I didn't really think anything of it. Um, I think it all started for, for this particular style. I think it all started when I worked on the Goldies like summer contest, like back in 2021. I just I will I I just get graduated and I didn't know what to do. And then yeah. I found this contest and I was like, oh, I really love this artist. And he's opening up like the contest. Why not join him when I don't have anything to do? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. And then I was like, huh. I actually had this illustration that I did like way before that of like a clay sculpture. And then I paint something over it. And I was like, oh, that's a lot of work. But if I get it moving, maybe it will look really interesting. So I had time for that contest, like fast forward to that time. And then I spent like a month like, working on just like a simple loop of like eight seconds of that. And then I posted it. Um, I didn't really expect anything big. I was just happy that it was done and it moved yeah. and it looks nice, I guess. <laughs> and then people came in like, oh, and it's like a big reaction. Yeah, I, I know it's not that big, but for me it is. So I consider that a big reaction from people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. No, I and love then some that. people contact me like, uh, "How do you like? How much do you charge for this?" And I was like, "I have no idea. <laughs> how much should I charge for this? It's a struggle for me. Like the part where I have to calculate like how much should I charge for my service. Yeah. It's a really hard thing to do. Even though I have done uh, a few." stuff already i'm still struggling to do that when people ask me if i have like specific rates i don't know hit me with like the details of your work so i can try to think of that in more detail yeah totally. but that work like specifically kind of like open up lots of opportunities for me i think wow yeah. i mean yeah galdi's has i think on instagram like a million followers plus on youtube he's got a million subscribers whatever yeah so yeah for yeah. sure i can see how that you know just getting the exposure for your work and then other people seeing it is that's that makes a lot of sense looking back but in the yeah. time i really appreciate that you're like i just want to make this move <laughs> and hope it works I think this is really hard i i actually wouldn't want to call it like a, a full stop motion thing because like there were lots of uh, photos manipulation happening because I still haven't been working on like making a proper like puppets mm. and it's like a plasticine clay that can melt anytime so it's kind of like I take bunches of photos and just like edit them and make them move so it's it's still frame by frame animation but it's just a lot of work and too much work I see I see, somehow. I see. yeah and I paint so over it so now that you're working for, okay, so <laughs> you just said it's too much work. Sorry. So before you were working in a studio type of setting where you're like, this is too much work. And then how is it now that you're a freelancer and you make your own hours and, and whatnot? What's, what's the, do you, what's the biggest difference? I guess, are you not working weekends uh, anymore? I hope. Um, 
sometimes I still work on weekends if I feel like because like it's it's just the schedules are like really yeah. weird, but I like it. Yeah, because it's your like own you time. can be really flexible with it. Like, oh, I want to work on this today. I can do that. I want to rest today. I can do that. Oh, I have to go to this like uh family like gathering, whatever. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, but But last year it was really hard for me to do that because mm, sometimes it's just you when you are the one who has to manage like the pipeline and timeline and everything. Um, it kind of like really hard to do that, especially with when when you were uh, were just starting out. Yeah, and you didn't have lots of experience, and the working scale is just like. Not the same as the one you worked before, and you kind of thought, "Oh, I can do this in this specific time," and then no, you are aging, <laughs> <laughs> and everything is just changing. The circumstance is not the same, and you didn't like uh, think about the time that you would have to, you know, and it's just like a lot to learn. Then, yeah. totally, yeah. But so now I feel like, yeah, I I feel a lot more ready to tackle things. Oh, good. What yeah. was one? What's one of the biggest things that has helped you feel ready to tackle things after coming through an experience where you felt like things weren't going so smoothly? Yeah, I feel like I have to understand that I am a human being. Yeah, I'm not a working machine, and that I have to rest and yeah, all that. Because like, uh, there is this working culture that is really unhealthy. Like I, I kind of mentioned before that you have to yeah. be ready. All the time for like your boss or like supervisor in like Thailand, like most of the time, uh, some places are not like that. Some people see the problems and they're like, oh, uh, they're nicer. Like you know, they 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 understand. Um, but yeah, I was, I I I think I still am a workaholic, but I don't want to be that. I'm trying to get away from that. It's so unhealthy. But when I was in school, I do that a lot, like staying overnight, like trying to push it over the limits, just because I want the assignments to be good, yeah. and ended up not putting it into my portfolio. Yeah, Even with it's, staying it's just, over, the working all night and everything, and yeah, it wasn't worth like, it in the end. Um. Yeah, there is this like very unhealthy culture of like getting good grades and all that. So yeah. People are going crazy. Like, oh, you have to do lots of things, and uh, spending lots of time and energy. Yeah, I felt. I and mean, I, I ex- yeah, I experienced so, that when I went to Sheridan College as well. A lot of my classmates were pulling all nighters quite frequently. But I don't know. I was also 30 years old, and I learned that you know I'm going to be doing <laughs> this for the next 30 years nonstop. So I'm not going to kill myself right now and then burn yeah. out. I need to play the long game. Mind you, there are still projects that I take where I'm working. I was working till like 3 a.m. last week on a couple of things that was doing after work. So I need to take my own advice still. <laughs> I feel you, yeah. I, I, I just it's, feel it's, like, hmm. Like even when you said like last year you were trying to figure out things, like I feel that too because like in my mind when I take on a project, uh, I have it like, I have all the stages done in my mind. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what to do here and do that here and this and that. And then when it comes to real life, things go wrong, things take longer than they should, and then you know, it, it you're stressing about all this stuff and handling the pipeline, and you know, you can't do composite until this thing is done and it's not done yet, and then you put it. So, yeah, definitely doesn't have it. Working freelance has its perks, but it. It also has its downs. Down yeah, that's true. You can't you can't just like call in somebody for a day and be like, "Can you do this for me?" I guess you can, but sometimes when you're in the middle of the project, it doesn't make any sense. So for you, you know, you've you've worked in you're working mixed media a lot lately. Is there one form of of animation that you want to get more towards? Is it stop motion? Because I know it, I've seen a lot of stop motion stuff you've posted, and it's fantastic, and it's got like this really cute, unique Thank style. You. We also mix it with two D, and I see the mixed media stuff there. So. Are you trying to specialize yourself in one area or just kind of go with the flow? I think I kind of want to go with the flow because like huh. the last project that has yet to come out because I signed an NDA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got to direct like something. Nice. And I feel like, yeah, um, it's great to expand the horizons and know lots of stuff and can work with 
different style because for me personally, I never intend to stick to one style specifically. Yeah. But I kind of pose that a lot because like it was fun and I I just like it. It's nice. nice. Yeah, but but I also want to come back to like 2D a little. And then maybe if I have time, I would want to learn stop motion. Like kind of like uh dipping my feet into like different fields because like I think each work uh deserves to have its own like style specifically crafted for it like you mm-hmm. know because I, I I also love working with like maybe music video maybe like something that has like messages in it and I feel like uh not every single message is gonna suit like this specific style or something so I feel like it's great to try to experiment and like find what's best for the project and totally. I think I really enjoy like doing that so I feel like I should try to you know work on it more yeah you mentioned music videos I know you've done some work for a band um out of the U.S. do you want to talk a little bit about that oh uh, yeah I it's it's been so long now but I don't know if they will ever come to this podcast or anything but I just I just want to thank them over and over again like oh, I, wow. I don't think I will be over to like because it's it's such a fun experience even though I didn't really know much of what I was doing and they were really kind and nice to me and they were really understanding so of, like, what was the band's oh, name yeah. uh the Q-tip bandits Q-tip bandits right right and then yeah. you you got some work from them because you were doing fan art for them yeah it's out of appreciation I I kind of like jumped over like oh whoa um yeah when I when I read the text I was like oh what <laughs> why would they want to hire me I I was just working uh I, I I was just a student but but I mean they were also students working yeah, yeah but seeing them like following their passions like I feel good for them I I I feel like whoa they they're really doing it out there and it's so nice like because like thinking about you know it, it sounds depressing but like in my country it's really hard for like in the artists to you know like go on tours and all that totally. and have the opportunities that they have so it's I'm really happy to see them doing what they love to do yeah. I mean what you just described is actually like a nice strategy even if you weren't thinking about it like that in yeah the first place. but you know finding uh, some other artists who are growing in their careers and just and making some fan art for them you know they will super appreciate it they'll know who you are and then when they need something they can hire you in fact that's happened to me and I've also hired people have done some fan art of my stuff oh, and so then I've nice. hired them like a musician put some music to like uh, a little thing I made in school just out of the blue off of my Instagram and now I'm working with him on something else right now. And I hired him. So here we are a couple of years later. And I immediately thought of him because I liked him and his work. And I knew he liked my work already. And it was just easy. So yeah, like when you're trying to get your foot in the door in places, that's actually uh, how a lot of people get music video work with uh, smaller bands. So it, it makes sense. And it's you, it's really fun too. Like you said, you know, you get to work on something you're really passionate about. I'll so, okay, cool. So you found. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was saying that I'm. I'm also really happy for you that you have found someone who works like on the music that you love to listen, and you can you get to collaborate. Totally. Yeah. Well, like if there's one thing I've learned, the difference from like my business career past and animation is like in the business world, everything is about your resume. Uh, you know, being super impressive, blah, blah, blah. But in like the animation world, it's just this big community of people who know each other and like each other and hire each other, really. Um, Which is really nice. (laughs) Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it's like you want to work with cool, interesting people that are talented. And that's that's about it. As far as I'm concerned, that's what I want to do. That's that's also something. Yeah, you you just sparked like something in my memory that I... Hmm. I, I think I wanted to talk about it as well. It's kind of really weird, like when you went into art school and people were really competitive, like, yeah. you know, I want to be the best of the class and all that. And I was like, why? <laughs> because like in reality, like it, even like, I think I got lucky again, like in, in my classes that my professor kind of implement lots of like teamwork into it. And uh, there was this one professor, he was really nice. Uh, I 
uh, he introduced us to the 24 hours animation contest. Right. That is hosted in like the US and it yeah. kind of shifts a lot of things like, in the my experience. Yeah. So we uh, for the contest like it's happened annually. If anyone is listening and still a student and want to attend, I would recommend it. 24 hours animation contest. Like find that on Facebook or anywhere. Um yeah. you have to gather a team of five like students and you have to get approval from teacher and then you work for 24 hours for a 30 second film of animation. Yeah. And there it will be a theme and then you will have to work on that for 24 hours. What do you remember really what year you did experience. this in? What? Do you remember what year you did this in? I think it's like 2000 17 and 18. Okay, because I, I did I it in 2018. So I was just wondering if maybe our, wait, our yeah, I did the 24 I, hour I, animation I challenge as well. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like 17 and 18 or 18 and 19. I kind of mixed stuff up. Oh but my goodness, imagine we, we were doing it at the same time. Year, and it was so weird. Like, yeah, people are super competitive, but that the 24 hour yeah. thing, I feel like my experience was people started off really competitive because everybody wants the best idea and by the end yeah, everybody exactly. just wants to get it done it's like yeah, exactly. you know it's it's super teamwork you really understand like what goes into making a short film you're super tired <laughs> yeah and but you can't lose anyone everyone is important to the pipeline i think animation talks uh talk as a lot about teamwork and all that totally everyone is important yeah of course yeah i mean it's funny that we're talking about teamwork and we're both freelance <laughs> <laughs> independent animators. Yeah. But oh, but actually like last year I was working alone at first. Like again with that project that I struggle a lot, even though I love my clan so much because they're like actually really nice. Like one of the nicest people I've ever met. Oh I mean wow. I have never I, I mean I have never really met them in real life because they live across the globe. But I mean they're nice. Yeah, because they have taught me that, you know, people don't actually answer emails on weekends. Don't do that. And your health always comforts. <laughs> it's really nice working with them. Yeah, but I kind of mess up a lot along the way. But yeah, I was working alone. And to the point where, like, you know, they kind of asked, would you want to, like, hire someone to help you with some of the process? And I was like, yeah, maybe. But it was really hard for me because, like, I, I, I still have lots of connections. Mm. They say, and I kind of don't know lots of people who can do like stuff that I do. But then recently, I got this one friend that I know from school, like from the university. Yeah, it's actually really weird. Like I never really thought I would hire someone to help me with like die cutting the photos into like PNG assets. Wow! Like when you move stuff, like uh, like I mentioned, I would take photos of like the clay thing, and then they would have like backgrounds, right? Yeah. And yeah. so I hired this person to help me with removing the backgrounds, and it helps a lot, you know. And and then I also consider like maybe I will hire someone to help me with other process as well. So it's kind of like I have to start like building trust and getting to know people and getting to know their craft and support them. So yeah, it was really hard for me though because like coming out of the school where people were really competitive, it's really hard to find that yeah, for reliable sure. friends. Yeah. I think, yeah, the building trust thing I think is a big one because art and animation is such a well, it's art, right? And you wanna you wanna like make what you wanna make. And if you involve yeah, so somebody personal. else in the process, it's really tough. So I definitely feel that the trust to know that somebody else is going to do the job of your standards, yeah. but also, yeah, teamwork and making something happen hundred percent. Yeah. Interesting. I also think it's amazing that, you know, coming out of school and working for the past couple of years, somebody from around the globe can hire you and uh, you're just working away in Thailand and they're hiring you from another country. I think that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day I will, I will move away, but I still don't know. Okay, that was uh, I was going to ask yeah. you that because <laughs> you mentioned, you know, there's not a huge artist or animation community. Uh, you said it's you don't have that many connections. Um, and I'm assuming that people don't really understand what you do when you talk, when yeah, you talk kinda, to them. Kinda. 
So yeah, are you, will you, do you plan on staying in Thailand in the future or do you want to move somewhere where there is more animation community? I think I might have to move away. Like, I mean, if I can choose, like I wouldn't want to move away from my family and all that. Like, yeah. I think, I, I don't think nobody wants to do that because like they have people they love like at home, you know, but I, it's like, it has to do a lot with like income and all that in the future. And like stability and all that. Totally, so I, yeah. I also want to help my family in the long run, like funding and all that. They need help. Mm -hmm. So I've been looking into like moving to other countries as hmm. well. Would you, if you move to another country, would you try to take a studio job or would you still try to work freelance? Mm, if freelancing is an option, then sure. But I think it would be more like, more possible for me to just go in and do like a uh, studio job first yeah, yeah yeah I mean like I think about that too in my career because you know I love stop motion there's not much stop motion happening in Canada but if I move to like Portland or LA I can studio hop to you know different there's open the portal there's Leica there's shadow machine blah blah, blah. there's tons of the stupid buddies there's tons of animation studios there that even if i wanted to do freelance and just jump on to a project once in a while when they need an animator it's an option whereas like here in toronto i have to stay freelance and find my own work continuously i guess or bring work here which so far has worked out great for me but also i just don't know what it's going to be like in the future um but also i don't know I, i'm i've been trying to bring in more international perspectives on the podcast lately to find out how it is going in other countries and uh from what i hear from you it, it you know the world is opening up a little bit more to have a lot more uh, remote work for artists around the world so i think that's i think that's promising yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah just oh i also like i mean if, if people really don't want to learn like the language and all that i would recommend them to find an agency Hmm. maybe even in their country like someone who speaks their language to help them with that oh yeah. like a like um you mean like someone who can help them find like work oh them. so just like somebody yeah. who knows when you say agency you mean like a creative agency or like an english speaking translating i think agency? a creative agency i see yeah, yeah yeah for sure i know a lot of people have agents and that really gets them consistent stable and higher paying work as well so yeah 100 yeah yeah i mean like i don't know i'm i'm excited to chat with you and i think it's been a really I, i've loved picking your brain you know we chatted about uh you know how you how you how things started from you from you know your parents bringing home art supplies on weekends and encouraging you to pursue art artistic dreams and your sister helping you as well and now here we are years later and you're freelancing on projects that you can't even talk about because you had to sign an NDA. How does it feel yeah. looking back? Uh, nice. But also <laughs> like uh, now, because like I, I have been like busy yeah. throughout my whole life, like studying, working, like even, even with like studying in high school, I already find the time to work on other things like drawing. Mm -hmm. I, I have many projects that I want to do, but now I'm like, I just want to rest and relax for a bit <laughs> take a break so like, yes yeah take a break you made it. Like, you're professional I mean, now <laughs> i mean no because i i i have this like imposter syndrome where i feel like um oh, maybe i'm not that <laughs> you know like yeah. I'm, I'm not there yet but i i also feel like i should slow down a little uh rest when i can Totally. Uh, don't don't die right now and yeah you you're only like 24 don't don't die yeah yeah just, i mean i i 100 relate with the imposter syndrome thing it's something i experienced i've been working on this video game for seven or eight months and last week i had like a big moment where i was like i'm not good enough for this <laughs> like why am i why am i here i'm no good <laughs> and I, really? I just had to like take a break and be like all right like it's okay to have these moments and it's, you know, also good to take mental health breaks, which, which is what I needed at the time. 
Um, but yeah. I don't know. I've been trying to like become more of a in my mind like this past year, like a more of a whole person, like work life balance because. I was also working like crazy. I went to animation school. I was working on evenings on freelance projects. I quit school to take a, a big project. And then, you know, I've, I've just been running like crazy, We're working on this podcast, working full time, taking on other things. And I've realized that, like, I need to bring more balance into my life. So, like, taking more breaks, taking weekends off. I don't answer my emails on weekends anymore. And just, like, you know, seeing people that I care about more and, and eating healthier and taking walks and stuff too, because like, I'm not, like you said, I'm not just a machine. <laughs> I'm yeah, a person. Nice. And I've realized that like, I need to devote more of my time to just becoming more of a person instead of a machine. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm super proud of you for doing all that. Oh, thank you. It's really hard. Yeah. Also, you mentioned a video game. Is it your own like? No, it's Project, not. I'm working. But, oh. I'm working with a fantastic uh, company that's based out of the U.S. as well, uh, with some really, really that's cool awesome. animators. Yeah, yeah. I feel very yeah. fortunate and grateful to have this opportunity, and I can't talk about it either. Oh yeah. Um, I see, yeah. But like, it's it's like a it's like a super dream project for me. I'm so happy to have it. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Which is also Let why I feel the imposter syndrome too, because I'm like, why me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're amazing. So that's why you. <laughs> oh well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Also, like. Yeah, let us know when it comes out. I'm, yeah, for I've sure. been playing games be because like um, this is my first like PC ever that I just got. Oh, I'm using and talking to you right now, so it's it's my first time like diving into lots of games that I never well, really got to play when I hundred percent. So I will let you know when it comes out. I'll make yeah. a big announcement. I'll be like, That's hey guys, sick. this is the thing I've been working on forever, <laughs> and I'm gonna share it. Yeah. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. And then likewise, when your NDA is no longer Thank under you. silence, you I'll share it too. We can uh, this is how things happen. I'm I don't know. I just like connecting with other people who have like a similar story and path to me and just like figuring out what they're doing on their side of the world. So it's like super nice to chat with you. I like this a lot. It's <laughs> really fun. Um, so yeah, we, we've chatted, you know, about where you came from and what you're doing now, you know, is there any topics that we didn't cover that you think would be important to share about your journey? Mm, so now I, I don't think so. Maybe it's because it's like 2.30 already. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I wanna, think I'm also anything. thinking of like wrapping things up and letting you go to sleep. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, unless there's anything so. else that, you know, final thoughts and maybe we can call it, we can call it a night for you. Uh, I... I don't think this is about me, but I don't know if you have done it yet, but have you ever thought of like an episode where you have someone asking you questions instead of you asking people questions? Yes. Because I feel like your part is really interesting. To yes. Talk about um, as well. Actually coming up, I want episode 200 to be an interview of me. I did an interview of me on episode 100, so it'll be a hundredth anniversary, yeah. I guess. I'm getting, I'm getting my good friend who's also a business professor at a college here to do an interview of me and I'm excited and scared of what he's gonna ask me That's so nice <laughs> but yeah yeah uh I don't typically well I end up talking about myself a lot because I talk on this podcast but you know I I don't typically showcase myself and I think it would be interesting to do that so I'm thanks for being interested that makes me feel good <laughs> I think people would be interested to hear about your path as well yeah yeah, well, uh, Patama, did I say that? Okay. Yeah, that's close. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the chat. You know, uh, it's it's been my pleasure. I feel very fortunate and and very thankful that you are willing to stay up so late to come on this chat with me. And I just want to appreciate that. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me here. Yeah. Of course, of course. It's really nice to talk. I, I don't feel like I mess up a lot about talking. There are times <laughs> when I feel like I mess up a lot when I talk, you know, and it's going to be a digital footprint. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's always that worry, but I think, yeah. I think you did great. So thank no worries you. there. Thank you. Yeah. And if you're listening and you want to, uh, you know, follow or reach out or check out Patama's work, I'm going to include their Instagram, their YouTube and their Twitter in the description of this chat. So please go check them out. And that's all for now. So thank you so much for listening. Okay, bye. The music for this podcast was composed by Will Farmer and the graphics by Daniel Abensauer. I encourage you to look them up if you enjoyed their work.